Yeah, I mean, for me, it means a lot of different things. Um, it can be related to pushing uh, sonic boundaries through challenging people through uh, trying to make them listen in a different way through new sounds, um, new noise. Um, technology is a big thing in our modern age, using new technology and new instruments uh, makes music inherently new. Um, but that being said, I don't think that you can just say that anything made today, made in the present, is new music. Um, I think that if somebody writes like a super formulaic piano sonata or something like that today, just because it's written today, I don't think that that means it's new music or something. I think that new music is definitely, has to be doing something new in some way. And that can still mean like going into the past and looking to older styles, but doing something new with them. Yeah, new music is in classical music and pop music and jazz and electronic music. Like, it's, it's everywhere. Exactly. Yeah, I don't think I really did consciously choose it maybe at the beginning. Um, I come from a background playing drum kit and stuff like that. And I did that for a long time playing in bands and then um, those all dissolved and eventually I got interested in making my own music but like I remember when I started like recording my own sounds and trying to make electroacoustic music without even really knowing what electroacoustic music was and I was just kind of just exploring sound very naively which looking back on it now was was fun in, in a way but I, I definitely appreciate knowing more now um, yeah just through learning and studying and things like that I think though like looking back on it now in hindsight like I did end up choosing it more consciously just because of all the all the freedom it offers me artistically and musically like I can do everything that I want to basically under the guise of new music or whatever right like I can do noise music electronic music I can do mixed stuff with chamber ensembles just acoustic stuff with chamber ensembles and for me that's most of the things that I want to do so yeah. yeah. It's pretty busy, I think, <laughs> for the most part. Um, definitely uh, working other jobs right now, like doing teaching jobs. I teach music theory and ear training at a little music school downtown. I do some teaching through the University of Toronto. So those are the, the jobs. And then a um, and then, yeah, a couple of commissions right now, so um, I try to compose a little bit every day, whatever that ends up being. But, um, for example, a few days ago I had a, like a full day, like a full like eight-hour day of just being alone at home and composing, and uh, I'm sure you know that, that you don't necessarily get that opportunity all the time. Um, so it was really great, and I got so much done, and it was super fun. Do your ideas come to you as soon as you sit down to write? Mm. Or uh, do you have to stare at the paper or at the computer for a while until they come? Or I don't know, do you keep thinking about your music in your daily life and then you sit down and then you write mm -hmm. everything all at once? Yeah, it definitely depends on like the project, what the ensemble is and stuff like that. If it's acoustic, then I'm usually like yeah, thinking a lot more about it in the abstract and like doing drawings and like kind of graphic like large-scale formulaic things like the big chunks of the pieces and I'll do or the big chunks of the uh, of the piece and I'll like yeah divide it into the form and do a lot of doodles and kind of graphic stuff mm -hmm. um, but if I'm doing any sort of electronic thing whether that's totally electronic or like mixing with chamber ensembles it usually starts in the DAW and working with sounds like in the computer whether that be through like sampled recordings or through synthesized sounds and yeah like working with the sound in the computer and manipulating it and looking to that for inspiration and ideas hell yeah i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i i don't have like too many reviews or anything that I could pull from. There was there was one that I found where uh, somebody said the piece implodes cognitive reason. So, I don't know. That was a pretty cool one. I like that. Um, 
Yeah, I remember one time somebody said uh, it felt like a fever dream. So I thought that was pretty cool. A lot of my music's pretty intense, I would say, and maximalist, noisy, kind of aggressive. So, um, yeah, it warrants those types of holy sh reactions sometimes. And that's uh, a lot of the time that's what I'm going for. So the other one that was implodes cognitive reason, that one was a review of a... Um, a trio that I wrote for drum kit electronics, bass clarinet, and piano, and then the other ones, the fever dream, that was just a comment that somebody made to me after, or um, it was on an online concert, so it was in the YouTube chats. <laughs> yeah. Just a, a, a listener said that, so. Um, honestly, just like continuing to have people play my music and like sometimes perform my own music with other people and just like I don't know that in itself is still super exciting just to hear my pieces sonified by anyone and especially if they're like great players it's just super rewarding and really exciting so and especially after the pandemic I don't know just hearing so much stuff online like being in the room with people during rehearsals and stuff like yeah just hearing it in a played by people in a space as opposed to like a, a mock-up or whatever, or just, yeah, hearing it in my head, uh, just hearing, yeah, people play it in the space is just, yeah, super, that, that's the exciting part for me. But um, as far as like concerts go and things like that, since moving to Toronto, actually, I've seen like a lot of fantastic music that has really blown my mind. <laughs> um, I saw this uh, electronic American noise artist named Jeff Carey in the summer play and he does like he's like a joystick and does like synthesized feedback stuff and it was and lots of strobe lights and it was just a really like incredible performance I'd never seen like music I'd never seen a piece or music that worked so well with strobes and that had, had been thought out that much and it was just so disorienting and intense and I loved it I loved it yeah that was in the summer in Toronto at Baby G's he was opening up for Matmos uh American uh, electronic duo and he was actually like their sound person mm -hmm. he was doing sound for them but then he also like had his own stuff so he opened up the set with his own or he opened up the show with his set mm -hmm. and yeah I thought he he stole the show it was it was really